Hey buddies, Fitzy for New Star here with another construct tutorial this time animated doors and then preloaded sounds. Okay, let's get straight to this and as you can see we have two walls, we have a door, we have um, triggers and we have some more triggers and then we have a blue player. What's supposed to happen enlarges that the player it's the first box, but it doesn't do anything, and that's a sound effect. We get the animated door, we get a trigger, it closes the door, and we have the sounds. The sounds aren't perfect yet, um, but the easiest way, and I was asked this, um, is how do we preload sounds? Well, first you import the sound. It's best to have it as an OGG format, means dot o g g, which means uh, you import something. Uh, I, I choose Audacity, uh, and I'll put the link down below. Audacity is a free uh, audio editor slash converter. You convert it into an OGG format, and a constructor will just import it automatically, and it'll just use it whatever. Lose it pretty well in OGG format. Sounds are pretty good. So what you do is on start of layout, uh, first what you want to do is you want to click right, insert new object, and there should be a, in the media, there should be a audio icon, and then you want to, on start of layout, click right, add event, audio, and well, Excuse me, I'm kind of tired. Um, you want to click preload and then choose the file. There should be a little drop down. Click done and you're good to go. And then every time it's um, overlapping or colliding, you'll, you'll say basically audio play. Uh, drop down file looping or not looping volume I put mine my DB because it's kind of loud um, and that's pretty easy on the sound uh, preload means that it will automatic queue it already have everything up so it's not like lagging while you're in the game uh, most of the times you don't really need preloading it's I mean it's good to have but you don't exactly need it for everything. Like if a character is jumping, he's doing a like a uh, or, or you know he's hitting somebody, he's going whop. You don't really need to preload those type of sounds. You just have them inside the game engine, and then you just say play animation uh, or play sound, no looping, and then you're good to go. Okay, on the door, it's basically um, if the player is overlapping the yellow sprite right here then we're going to subtract one from the door. The door global normal, uh, ugh, global no number variable is 200. No, I think that's a bit short. Maybe it needs to be 400. Let's see how that does. And it's still not doing anything. I'll set it back. Doesn't really matter. Um, subtract one from door and then set width to door. play sound and then basically you do the same thing when it's overlapping the green this is a basic door not an advanced door I'll do the advanced door later and then um, on start of layout every tick you want to set the door um, to set width to door this basically tells it to watch everything and make sure that it's doing what's supposed to be doing which means um, if it's colliding with something that affects the width follow the orders on is overlapping the black dot then you have um, basically it resets it back to its normal width um, let's do this real quick so it's, it, it's shrinking it sets it back to its normal width and then closes it and you got the, uh, I'll fix the sound later but this is a basic to get you where you're going video and so every time it hits one of the black dots 
then you're good to go. Now this is for like a top-down scenario, so you would normally have the floors um, in like, let me insert something here. A, like this, like you would have tiles, so what I would do is like, okay, um, so he doesn't hit it automatically, is that I mean, he's going to have to, you know, touch them, but he's going to, he's not going to touch them automatically. And then we'll make another one of those, rotate it. Oops. And you can make these disappear or appear, so he doesn't hit them in the first place. So it's basically when he collides with something. So basically, you can put an invisible box where the middle of the door is supposed to be. So once he goes through, he collides with that. These appear, or are set to the position, or whatever, and then when he hits one the door closes so let's do something like this yeah I'm gonna make a space so we can go through without activating one of these there you go so we're opening up the door still opening up the door yeah we're, now we close the door and there we go. So, I mean, it's rough, but it gets the job done. And then um, I'll probably be perfecting this in the next video where they appear and disappear. So he has to hit like a little invisible box here. And then these guys appear. Then he hits one and it closes it. And then the sounds will be a whole lot better. So I'll probably look for some top down sprites on open game art or something like that to make it a little more pretty. This is just a basic overview and then we'll make it look r realistic I think I might use the top down spreads f from our top down game um, but that's about it guys it's kind of it really kind of simple you just have to per perfect it to make it work good use some hacks to uh, you know make sure well, to you know you don't want to put like a huge amount of effort in something that's really kind of simple like a door um, so what you can also do is you can also uh, animate the door so you have the you know four or six sprites of it opening and then you just reverse that to closing so that could work but set width is a little bit easier but i uh, hope you enjoyed it and i will see you in the next tutorial guys bye